Hi guys, Harbs and Harbs here. Today I'm going to be looking at an event that will take place in the Githyanki Crash. Unfortunately, I couldn't put it in the title of the video as it is a big data mine spoiler. So please stop watching now if you clicked on this video by mistake. Uh, let's get Yes, the Cult of the Absolute invades the Githyanki Kresh, and in this video we're going to be looking at some of the finer details of this. Sorry for the delay on this video, my patrons voted for it back in October, but I've been super busy. If you want to follow me on Twitter and find out about farm animals in Baldur's Gate 3, then please feel free. The link is down below, as are the links to my Discord and Patreon. I'd like to say a big thank you to Labator and Priest from the server who found a bunch of lines and images that I'd never seen before relating to the Kresh, and that's been a huge help for this video. Okay, let's go. So first off, why would the Absolute want to invade the Kresh? Well, we know that the Githyanki led by Kithrak Voss are trying to find the artifact, the same artifact that the cult is looking for. We also know that the Absolute is something to do with Mind Flayers. Just look at this line here which shows the voice of the Absolute being linked to an Elder Brain, and then there is the dead Mind Flayer that literally tells us that it is a circle of them. The goblins and drow are unaware of this fact, but if the upper echelons of the cult are illithids, then they're going to want to take down the Githyanki. After all, it's an intense rivalry that spans the aeons of time, and it was the Githyanki red dragons that helped to bring down their nautiloid. However, is the artifact the only reason for the cult's invasion of the Kresh? Maybe not. The Githyanki Kresh is potentially located here, in the ruins of Sunrise Spire, an old temple to Lathander, that according to prayers from the faithful 1997 was located in a very strategic position and was destroyed in 1177 DR. Given that the ruins are no longer an active temple and it is located strategically, it could be a perfect place for a Kresh. So how do we know that the Kresh is in Sunrise Spire? Well, we know that the Kresh is located to the west of where we are currently. This here is the the Western Bridge, and in the game files that there are several lines that reference something called the Radiant Sun. It doesn't matter, the Radiant Sun is active. Any minute now, it will blast the entire crash and kill all, even me. The Radiant Sun will purge all life in the crash soon. As well as the Lathander Solar Machine, which both sound like good defenses against the usually light sensitive illithids. We can see this line My people's craft married to yours, the monks caught light, Githyanki unleash fire. Is this a team up with Lathander priests and the Githyanki, or is it just referencing the fact that the Githyanki have adopted the artifacts left behind by the Lathander priests? I don't know who says this line, but it could be this sentient amulet that we find in Grimforge. So what is the Kresh called? Well, thanks to Labator on the Discord server, we can probably safely assume that it is called Kresh Yelik, or however you might pronounce that in Gith. A couple of months ago, Priest found several images that were tagged as murals in a Githyanki Kresh. This one depicts Lathander holding up a baby, and this seems to depict some kind of nautiloid in rather warm sun-esque colours. Anyway, in previous videos I've showed this line quite a bit. Know that there are many who serve the Absolute even in death, waiting for the day when the grand design will come into play. They will be your allies, but make sure to identify yourself clearly to the skeletons, or they might mistake you for enemies. The grand design is ultimately the re-establishing of the Illithid Empire, and according to 5th edition's Volo's Guide to Monsters, one of the sub-goals is the discovery and destruction of all Githyanki crashes. Christopher Perkins, one of the lead game designers over at Wizards of the Coast, has said that one of the Illithid's goals, if they are to make a planet hospitable, is to extinguish the world's sun, which would surely make the Githyanki Kresh, based in an old Temple of Lathander, God of Dawn and Renewal, of particular interest. Remember also that the Dead Three are involved in the cult. This particular line could be found pre-patch 6, and seems to be said ironically, but is it foreshadowing something? It's a dark alliance of dead gods, perverting the Illithid's grand design to their own unholy ends. The Dead Three's involvement will become important in the next few chapters. 
Nightblades with me. The Night Gith must not reach his queen. Nightblades are the lowest ranked cultists of Baal, as seen in Descent into Avernus, and I've mentioned this before in another video, but there are only mention of Baal's cultists within the game files of BG3. But this could be because of a line in Descent into Avernus that Corian Key, a death's head of Baal, leads the cult's field operations, meaning that it is Baal's cultists to actually do the dirty work whilst Merkel's lot focuses on the undead and Bane's cultists focus on running the show. Nightblades with me, the rest of you, peel his skin, burn his flesh, feed your lust. Baal's cultists seem to have a very active interest in the creche and potentially wish to use a Gith Yankee loyal to Baal in order to get inside it. A true soul Gith blessed by Baal, bizarre creature and useful. Vale, you bring a she-Gith to our flock, beg my mercy. Vale is known as Reaper Vale. A Reaper is a type of Baal cultist. Let's find out where your Shegith's loyalties lie. A Gith Yankee in my lord's service. You are a dangerous creature, Shegith. Let's put you to use. Then who do you stand with, Shegith? Your queen or me? Then the actual infiltration of the crash itself. These lines seem to be when the cultists actually arrive at the gates of the crash. Time is short, open the gate, it is time the Night Gith knows his place. Open the gate, Shegith, or you will suffer. You will open the gate, or you will be illithid. This line is interesting because it sort of makes out that these cultists of the Absolute, who we know are strongly associated with Baal, are aware of the illithid plot. Do they have access to this instant transformation technology that we have seen on the Nautiloid, or have they promised to remove the tadpole if she infiltrates it? Kills Varsh Glare, now go deactivate the defences like I ordered you to. There also appears to be someone important in Baal's cult called Father Silas. Kill her Silas, I will ask her corpse how to unlock the gate. This line might be said by the Butcher, a chosen of the Absolute that might be associated with Bane and who likely leads the overall attack on the Kresh. It doesn't matter if I'm a true soul, Father Silas's orders are to kill all Githyanki. The scent of black blood and death wafts from the father. You know his ways, the ways of your lord, Baal. Finally, we have this line, which directs someone to the creche and which will lead us into our next chapter. Do not deign to tell me my lord's will. Now go to this sun before I promise your blood to Baal. Many of these lines have been removed as of patch 6, including this one. Kithrak Voss, Quaidnos, and many Githyanki are defending the Kresh against several cultists who are led by the Butcher and by Orin. Both the Butcher and Orin appear to be high up in the cult, and the Butcher is the one who actually goes up against Kazador in the graveyard of Baldur's Gate. I've linked a video down below which covers that. The Butcher seems to be the one in the cult that manages the undead, something which might already associate him with the Dead Three. Secondly, in Descent into Avernus, there is a place in Bolo's Gate called Hamhock's Slaughterhouse. This place is led by Pasque Enreal, who is a black gauntlet of Bane and the leader of the Dead Three cultists in the city. If anyone was aware of the Dead Three's plans, it would likely be him. Could this be the Butcher in Bolo's Gate 3? Possibly, it would certainly be a nice connection to the slaughterhouse given his name. Now it seems like we will have a choice as to whether we can help to defend the Kresh or whether we want to team up with a cult in attacking it. Test choice antagonized Voss. Test choice allied with Voss. Case 5, Kithrak Voss is with the party and can guide the player. But it seems like when the attack goes down that it is fairly savage no matter which side we choose. Orin runs towards the dragon. She athletically leaps atop its head and forces a tadpole into the dragon's eye. Acknowledging its new master, the dragon roars, turns its head and burns the remaining Githyanki with a blast of flame. Now that sounds fuck awesome, but this would eventually transform it into something called a brain stealer dragon. But I doubt the transformation is that quick, so it likely gets mind controlled once the tadpole is in its head. In the recently released Fizban's Treasury of Dragons, there is a new type of dragon revealed called the Elder Brain Dragon, which is where, through a gruesome transformation, an Elder Brain latches on to an incapacitated dragon and effectively becomes a physically powerful and more importantly, mobile Elder Brain. Have Wizards of the Coast included this Elder Brain Dragon in Fizzbands because it is something that will feature in Baldur's Gate 3? Maybe. But anyway, given that to become a Brain Stealer Dragon, it just requires the implanting of a tadpole, that is the far likelier option here. 
Anyway, we can also see this line. With that, the dragon flies away through the broken wall, taking Orin with it. I don't know if this means that the dragon kills Orin, or Orin is literally flying away on the dragon. I am tasked in killing all Githyanki here, you're a Githyanki, die. Dead Githyanki trainee, dead Githyanki kid slash teen placeholder. So this is a real take no prisoners kind of attack, and we know that the Absolute has ambitions to spread itself to other worlds and planes because of lines like this. And it seems like the Githyanki Kresh is quite kitted out with various portals. A Stargate used to open portals to different dimensions. The Gith were using it to go home. This list here shows the names of some of the portals that can likely be found there. Note that the astral plane is called Home, and Avernus is titled Deal, likely referring to the pacts between Gith and Tiamat. We can see that during the invasion of the Kresh, that the Absolute seems desperate to stop Kithrak Voss from doing two things. Number one is that they don't want him to escape back to Vlakith on the astral plane. I will make for the plane gate, Vlakith must hear of this. Nightblades with me, the Night Gith must not reach his queen. Secondly, the cult doesn't want Kithrak to destroy the Kresh. Udarak, arm the Dawnstar, if we cannot defend the Kresh, we will destroy it. Take my head if you must, Istik. The Radiant Sun will turn the whole Kresh to cinder. Srim Udarak runs to the roof, while Kithrak Voss heads below to the portal room. True soul, take these novices to the roof. The Udarak Gith means to destroy this place. You will stop him. But then we have this line here. You will not live to tell Vlakith. Soon the Radiant Sun turns this crash to ash. I'm not sure who says this, but I'm guessing it can't be Voss, as he seems to want to get back to his queen. Perhaps the player can say this to the Kithrak. After all, we do have a daisy line that says this. TBD, we need a system for showing Daisy and making them talk to the player in the world. Daisy insists that the player shouldn't let Kithrak Voss escape. I feel like Voss wants to destroy the Kresh, but not before he has escaped to the Astral Plane. Udarak will be the one to activate the Radiant Sun, whilst Voss escapes. Now, there does seem to be the opportunity for Voss to achieve this. As he sees the players arrive, Kithrak Voss hurries up and jumps through the portal. A lone gith, severely wounded, stands at a console. She keys something in, the portal closes, leaving the room dark and cold. And then other lines which clearly show how the Kithrak didn't make it. The Butcher decapitates Kithrak Voss. What I find interesting is what information Voss has and why the Absolute are so desperate for him not to escape. I've suspected for a while that Voss knows things that other Githyanki do not. Lazel already suspects that he is a traitor, but this is largely down to her naivety on just how many secrets Vlakith actually has. What if Voss is covering something up? Something that if it got out would damage Vlakith's goddess-like status in Githyanki society, and therefore assist the Mind Flayers at the head of the Cult of the Absolute. Anyway, there is more to do with the crash, but it is a lot of speculation, and there's already been a lot said here. If you like this video, then do please give me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!